a domestic classic, though, earlier here tonight for the English lightweight title. Danny Hunt, the holder, beat Chil John to claim this crown, one defence this year, stylish but dogged by cut problems and injuries along the way so far. Lee Meager, the challenger, three years older, but a very similar record and unbeaten, also has beaten Chil John and fought in good company so far. Big chance here. Here's the star. Ten rounds for the English lightweight championship held by Danny Hunt, the former Repton amateur who's been improving quite fast as a professional. He's in the blue trunks here in with the unbeaten Lee Meager. He's from Salford, but actually now lives above a gym in Hackney, which I guess is handy. And once represented Jersey in the Commonwealth Games six years ago. Only lasted 20 seconds, unfortunately. He's done better as a pro. Well, when the English title was introduced, I was all for it, I still am, and this is one of the reasons, good little matches, these are two little kids who have probably been kept apart until they reach British title level. Good positive start there from Megan, he's getting close, he's getting his punches off well, he's looking relaxed. The Hunt wants uh, a bit more mobility, I think. Quite competent. Danny Hunt, it may be that Meager's just got a bit more power. They've got a common opponent in Chill John. Hunt beat him on points. Meager stopped him in five rounds. That may or may not be significant. We'll see as it goes on. Nice and sharp from Hunt there. Both of them looking rather respectful of each other in this opening round and missing a lot in that exchange. There's some tasty looking hooks here coming from Niga. Didn't land flush, but he got them off well. Niga, who earned this chance with a very good win over the former British and Commonwealth Super Featherweight champion Charles Shepard, who he stopped in seven rounds last December. Good bit of form, Matt. Just edging a bit closer, Meager, as the round's gone on. It's a cautious-looking start from a rather over-eager Danny Hunt in this first round. He's missing a lot. Just a bit more control, looking a bit more relaxed, Meager, for my money, early on here. I think he's actually working and looking, looking relaxed. He's trying to look a little bit too casual, though he's not bothered. His defences could be a little bit tighter, but this is a good positive start from him. Getting close, getting nice little bust up punches. Good left hook again there. Real good start from Niga. Oh, two right hands, a jab as well. Back comes Hunt with an answer. That might loosen him up a bit. Suddenly, the fireworks start late in the round. Well, I think Hunt realised he had to come back with something. He's been missing quite a bit, as you've said already. He shipped a couple without reply. So that, that was a good response from him. Just a cool look about Liga. He's three years older at 26, took one back there, having landed the right hand. Now that's Liga's round for me. Interesting division with uh, recently beaten. Come back all you. Come Jason come Cook, of course, Graham Ells, the British champion, Steve Murray hanging around. Bobby Vanzi talking of retirement now. Fighters like that, they've all uh, just got things to prove a little bit, though, and there's room for others to join them at the top, and the winner here can start to think about the bigger fights, certainly. This is a good one in its own right. Just a little crossroads fight for both of them. The early impressions that Niger has a few little pro moves that Hunt doesn't have. I don't know if that will have bearing on the final outcome. Hunt just a little bit predictable with his long range boxing. Niger doing some little fancy feints, getting himself inside, putting punches together. Niger, who says he was inspired to box by his uncle, who was an amateur for a while, and by watching. Chris Eubank fights on the television. That ages us all, doesn't it? See Hunt not finding a strong enough jab to keep Nagel at arm's length. So he's still coming through, still landing the better punches. 
The rounds are close, but Niger always seems to have a little edge. Just finding the range that much better, I think, early on, Lee Meager here. Still time for Danny Hunt. There's not a lot in it, but just that impression of Meager looking the boss. There's a nice, relaxed way about him. Looks quite rounded in there at the moment. Getting caught by the old one back from Hunt. It's good action. Terrific stuff. Your poor crowd, and they know what they're watching, liking this so far. Well, maybe Hunt feels that backing off the back foot stuff wasn't working. He's standing his ground, but his body weight is, is back on the ropes, which is taking away maybe a little power, and he can't afford to give up the power. He doesn't have the loads of it, so he wants to get his body weight forward some more meat into the punches. Hunt's only defeat so far was when he was beaten on cuts against Leroy Williamson. And the right hand, yes, so he just dropped his guard a moment, comes back with a fast little flurry hunt, trying to refuse to be dominated in the fight. Body shot this time from Meager, who's the man who's backing Hunt up at this stage. Well, this is the closest round of the fight so far, as far as I'm concerned. But I still just like, I think Meagher just has that little edge, which gives him the round in my card. But Hunt, big improvement, and he's working this round. Just a bit more snap and accuracy from Hunt, even with his back to the rest, and he's nailed by a right hand as they worked in there. Bit of blood around from somewhere here, and it's a cut by the left eye of Danny Hunt, and he has had cuts problems before. They were worried about that. He's got a real problem. You can see the, the way that is bleeding, Ian, I think, with this knee. This may be all over Mick Williamson, an excellent cut, man. I haven't had a look at the cut yet, but I can see the volume of blood that was being... Oh, that is a bad one. And we think it was a clash of heads that did this, Jim. That looks deep and worrying, but if, he, if it can be mended, he's got the right man there in Mick Williamson. Well, it's a little bit early in the fight to, to, to have serious cuts. And uh, I didn't spot the clash, but yep, yep, that, that could quite possibly have been it then. Showers of punches coming through, but that was a bad clash. We got another look at it. Yep, yep, that was the one that caused it. You can see the blood straight away, well spotted by the cameraman there. That's a bad, bad cut. Referee Mark Green will give Hunt every opportunity. A reminder that uh, we don't go to the scorecards or anything like that. If Hunt is beaten by that cut, or he can't carry on, he's lost the fight, simple as that. Maybe that's something else that the British Boxing Board of Control might look at as they uh, restructure one or two things. Three judges is something they need to be seriously considering as well, incidentally, after one or two recent controversies. Well, Hunt's doing some evasive boxing here without countering, which is a good idea, he's come back with a couple then. But uh, when they come off second best in the exchanges, try something else, and that's what the young kid's doing, which is nice. Just a little bit of advice of boxing without countering everything. I'm going to keep that cut eye out of the way as much as he can here, Danny Hunt. He's going to have to be clever. He's trying to be more mobile, and that might be the best tactics anyway, because all the time he was in front of Meager, he was just slightly coming off the worst in the exchanges. See, Meager has, has developed a nice little dip as he comes forward, which just puts his chin out of harm's way, gets him that little bit closer, and Hunt hasn't really solved it yet. Hunt wants to be firing jabs as Meager comes forward, and strong enough jabs to keep him off. But he's not doing that. See, again, Meager coming through, but Hunt's got. Trying to tire him to the body and slow him down a bit as well, Meager. These are full-blooded shots that uh, Hunt's throwing back to, taking a lot of steam. Meager, always the one with that little bit of control over what he's doing. Meager's had some sparring for this fight with uh, Richard Williams, the former Commonwealth light middleweight champion. So that's high class, and uh, he works in the same stable as Howard Eastman, one of the top middleweights in the world, who looks likely to get a fight with Bernard Hopkins. 
pressure from Miga again. He got him with a good left hook in there. And another body shot. Hunt's in a spot of bother at the moment with the cut. Looking a bit desperate under pressure. Feeling the strain. See, he doesn't have the power. We knew that before it started. I'm wondering now, does he have the maturity? He's still young. I think that's the reason they've been bringing him along slowly. But maybe he's still to mature a little bit. Uh, Miga, three years older, looks that little bit stronger. Well, he was cut on the night he won this English title against Chil John. He got the job done in the end there, though it was close. And look at this comeback here from Danny Hunt and how his fans are loving this. It might be born of a bit of desperation. He's having to throw whatever the strategy was out of the window and really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miga. It's terrific action. Yep, this is even better than I expected. I expected a kind of science match. That one, how come? Yeah, right I wonder hand. if the referee was thinking about stepping in there. He, he started stepping in just before the bell sounded. Definitely shaking up there. Big right hand just before the bell and the left hook that followed. The cut is holding up at the moment. But he had enough problems in this fight without that, didn't he? Yeah, and I think one of his problems too is putting his own power into his punches to try and keep Miga under control. He's using a lot of steam. You've got to listen. Don't swing when you catch him. It's not tight. You catch him, you'll go. See, he's really busting a gut to keep in this fight. I think that's the big problem. Miga is much more of control of his movements and what he's doing. It's educated pressure. He's bobbing, he's weaving, he's getting close. He's always making Hunt work that little bit harder than he wants to. I wonder if Hunt maybe emptied some of the tank in that previous round. This is at the end of the round, and he's hurt by that right hand there. Yeah, but I thought I spotted the referee about three he felt Even he was just 50 bell as it happened. Fifth round. Interestingly, Jim thought maybe the referee's going to step in there towards the end of the last round. It certainly hurt, anyway, was Hunt. Hunt in the blue trunks. Remember, from South End, Miga from Salford, though he gets around, having represented Jersey as an amateur, and living now down in East London. Smile on his face, Miga. He's been well prepared for this by the McCrackens, isn't he? You can see that. Yep, he's been well prepared and also well taught. Some nice little moves I'm enjoying watching. The way he's getting himself close without committing himself too much as clever. And again, Hunt really giving it all he has to stay in there with Miga. I think Miga feels as if he can walk through anything Hunt's got to offer to land his own punches. And that's a big problem, I think, for Danny Hunt, that he just does not have too much dynamite in those fists, to use the old cliche. just ride out the storm and come back as best he can maybe in the second half of the fight he's got a lot of a lot of gameness about him he really has he's going south for for a moment there was hunt uh, that's just a slip that's a slip no not that well there's certainly nothing wrong with hunt's heart he's giving us 100 percent hasn't always been going his way but he's taken out the full-blooded shots which you don't like seeing getting busted up around the face generally a bit swollen looking totally unmarked a confident Lee Meager. Well, Hunt has done most of, the, most of the work in the first couple of minutes of this round, but I get the feeling it's taken so much out of him. Good little chopping right there from Hunt. I think some of the strength might have gone out and some of the belief as well that he might have brought into the contest in the first place tonight. That's good work, putting them well together there. Danny Hunt, who won three National Association of Boys Clubs titles in his days as an amateur in successive years, first since Nassim Hamid to do that. Well, this is the best round that Hunt has had for me, but he's not being allowed to work at his own pace. So again, he's taken a lot out of the tank. What well, he's really having to work for everything he achieves. Much more relaxed look about Miga. Impressive this by Eager tonight, though. Hunt has worked hard in this round. The cuts got worse again, I'm afraid to say, for Danny Hunt.
is round six. Liga in control in the red trunks here, the challenger for this English title. And a victory that would give him a nice catapult up the British rankings as well. Feel sorry a bit for Danny Hunt with these recurring cut problems that he does have. That's nice work from him with his back to the ropes. Niger only hit the gloves that time. Get the defence from Hunt. Well, Hunt's been told to, to move, get the jab working, but you've got to jab strongly enough to discourage the other fellow. This is better from Hunt. Just a little bit more ragged with his work, Meager, at the start of this round as well. Not as accurate. Hunt has started well here. He will believe that he can pull things around. And who knows? He might just be able to do that if he can come up with a run of rounds in the second half of the fight. Cuts bleeding again. Almost ducking beneath the radar there, wasn't he, Danny Hunt? Well, Niger doesn't seem to be able to, to maintain the pace, although that was much better. Still getting close, though, which is a problem for Hunt. Two-punch combination to the head, starting a good little spell for Niger. Can he sustain it? Niger really wants to raise the pace again. Good stickability by Danny Hunt in this fight so far. He's stayed with it. He's hanging on in there and hoping he can slowly turn it around. That's a lovely right hand. And then the left of this one. This is better from Hunt. He doesn't look as tense and tight as he did earlier. Now he's loosened up. Well, he's not been subjected to the same pressure as he was in the first three rounds. He's more time to work here. He's punching have a little bit more of an effect. Definitely a slight deterioration in Meager's work, which is allowing Hunt to improve, and he's taken that chance. And he's just slipping a few more now. There's a bit better head movement from Danny Hunt. Is this the start of a revival for him? He did quite well in the last round, too. He switched south for occasionally in an effort to try to throw Lee Meager one or two problems. Is Meager just running out of gas a little at this point, or ideas? Yeah, well, he certainly has not maintained the pace. I think he's really feeling the pace now. Now round seven. Shift in the plot in this fight for the English lightweight championship. These are new titles that have been introduced over the last year or so, giving opportunities to boxers coming through. Not everybody would agree with the fact that we need more titles, but this one has come up with an interesting matchup, so that is to be applauded, and across a promotional divide as well, something we very rarely see in Britain. Next thing, there'll be a peace deal in the Middle East. We're making things a little bit hotter now, Niga. I know his corner will want him to sustain this. Maybe Hunt's won the last couple of rounds. You could argue that to maybe bring the margin back to two rounds on the card. That's certainly the way I've got it. First four to Mega, last two to Hunt. He's looking a bit more confident now. Danny Hunt, the cut, is holding up at the moment. Mega not finding it so easy to get close as he was earlier. Tell you what, if Danny Hunt does win this fight somehow, it will be a heck of a comeback. One of the great comebacks, I think, we've seen in uh, a British ring. And he's really starting to go to work here on Miga, who all of a sudden in this fight is beginning to look a bit bemused. Yep, and uh, Hunt is showing the grit that you can't teach fighters. Just his boot tech coming loose there. But he's showing tremendous grit. Everything going against him early. Terrible cut over his left eye. 
Yeah, it's just a pity the little break in the action. I don't know if that would suit Meager. He was just trying to get himself back into, into the driving seat there. Uh, I thought that only happened on Sunday morning parks. Football people's boots coming undone. But there it is in the middle of a professional boxing match. Hunt suddenly full of confidence, got a bit careless. Caught by a right hand back from Meager. Crowd loving this toe to toe tear up stuff. But Meager has to pour the punches out, get himself back and top. Cut him off, buddy, then. Cut him off. Don't care where you go in world boxing, you won't find many better arenas for this sport than the York Hall, with people draped over the banisters, watching it standing room. They're in the aisles. Smoky atmosphere, it's throwback stuff. And a good fight going on in the ring, too. Nicely poised as well. Well, this is the closest round we've seen so far. They've all been fairly close, but I'm struggling to split them here. Toe to toe, each landing, each landing cleanly. Who's got what it takes down the stretch in this one? Better from Mega. Will he get a second win? I mean, both kids that are not used to long-distance fights, maybe they're both thinking now, especially me, a bit saving a little bit, but he's certainly dropped the pace. Each two ABA finals as an amateur himself, losing to Stephen Burke and Dazzo Williams, who've gone on to achieve things in the pro game. So no harm in that. Blue trunks, remember Danny Hunt. Ninth round. And there are ten rounds in also. Six minutes left in this one, it could be still up for grabs. The perception at ringside is that Miga has a lead of some sort at this point. See that little crouch he's developed, just slipping under the leads. It's caught now and again, but it's working well, certainly at this level. Trainer Alan Smith was trying to lift Danny Hunt between the rounds and telling him he needed both of these last two if he wanted to have a hope of getting his arm raised and holding on to his title. Good body punching from Miga. Just arm punches, really, from Hunt at this point. I think he's just trying to stop Miga from working at the moment, just keeping the, the little pushed-out shots. They're not really Ooh. solid punches. Is that one more? Is that a body shot? Body shot's hurt him a bit. He's in trouble here. And Miga closes in, and Hunt looks a bit spent here. Covering up, a body shot hurt him, and it took some time for him to suck all that up and get over it, and I'm not sure he's fully over it now. Miga's coming on here and wants a finish. Ninth round, Hunt crisis. Yeah, he just can't seem to get his lungs filled up. His back was to us. I wondered if it was a low shot, if he was complaining, but it wasn't. Hasn't complained, that's just taken all the steam out of him. He's showing tremendous resilience, Danny Hunt. It was a body shot, we think, that knocked a lot out of him there. And some fighters would have gone down from that, but this is one brave and courageous operator. And look at him come back, Hunt, here. Tremendous stuff. Well, it's a mini classic, this one. Well, thankfully, Hunt hasn't been involved in too many of this type of battle because you don't like to see young kids having to grit their teeth so hard. But there's a title at stake, and you can see what it means to both of them. It's going to be an ageing fight, I think, this for Danny Hunt. He's given it so much, but how much is left in the tank at this point? All that fitness and conditioning work is needed now, every ounce of it. Meagher's had a big, big round here. He might have put this fight beyond Danny Hunt for good in this round. He's on the run here. He came into the old pop trap, Meagher, of nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, but it's Hunter doesn't have anywhere to hide at the moment in the fight. Trying to say it's dead level, but 
to me. I've got Mega 3 up here. Yeah, well, points wise, that has put it out of that. That's the body shot. That back was too me. The way he reacted, I thought it was a low punch, but you can see on replay it wasn't. It just sucked the breath right out of him. Did well, actually. Actually, finished the round well. And it shows you the grit and determination he has. But this is turning into a real hard night's work for him. Just popping shots out here, just trying to stop the onslaught of Mega, not really putting power into the shots. So I full credit for both guys for what they threw into this. Take him out with your hands on. Don't stop throwing shots. You can't have breathers. You can't have breathers. You can't have breathers. Getting excited in the corner now. Last round. Mega might think he's got it in the bag, but you, it pays to take nothing for granted. The crowd here are on their feet clapping. They've appreciated what these two fighters have given them tonight. And they've given plenty. They both really deserve full credit for that. Hunt Blue Trunks, remember, last round. And I think he needs a stoppage or knockout, really, to pull this around. But you never know how the referee's got it. I think he gave himself a little bit too much to do in the early stages. He struggled for the first three or four rounds to find his rhythm. But full credit for the way he's come back and the way he's finishing here. Good start to the round by Hunt. He'll need to sustain it, though. Oh, Mika caught by a big right hand. If only he had some more power, Danny Hunt, because he caught him flush with that one, and it just bounced off Mika's chin. He hardly blinked. I mean, that's really all he needs, a bit more snap on his punches, because the moves are there, the punches are there, the variety. The determination and the courage, just a little bit more power, would be perfect. What an effort these two have put up, and you do really have to admire, especially Hunt's ability to bounce back at times in this fight. Badly cut, in trouble. Here he is in the last round, still trying to go for it, taking a few for his pains. He's winning the last round at the moment, I'd say, Hunt. He's prepared to pump the punches out, just force them out. He's got nothing left, he's exhausted. They're just prepared to force the punches. A magnificent battle, this, for this English title. And if these new championships are going to produce fights like this, well, they're welcome. Last minute of the fight. Oh, the gum shield has come out of Mega. What a finish here from Hunt. Listen to his fans here. The crowd are roaring all around this arena at what these two have given them. I would not have believed that Hunt could finish this fight with a big round, but that's what he's doing. Unbelievable. He looked on the verge of defeat in the ninth, but in the tenth, he just has not stopped working. Well, these two have been involved in something terrible, and that right hand really rocked Mika back there. Again, it caught him flush. It bent his knees a bit, but he stayed upright. Hunt is on the very edge of exhaustion. They both must be. They're fighting each other almost to a standstill here. Great fight, and Hunt gets it! Hunt gets it! Well, it was an amazing effort from him. It really was. But whether he'd done enough to win the fight was very much open to question. Well, in that type of fight, so many close rounds, but uh, not a bad decision, Ian, but not one I agree with. I thought uh, Meager was in control in the early stages. I thought uh, Hunt gave himself far too much to do, but what he put him to the, the fight, he certainly turned the fight around. I don't agree with the scoring, but a wonderful battle. I have to say, I feel very sorry for young Liga. There's a lot of booze going on around the arena. I mean, there's an argument for saying it was a memorable fight and it was on the closest side, so maybe we shouldn't be having a huge argument about it. I mean, tremendous. You wouldn't deny it to Hunt, but I do feel sorry for Liga. I'm not having a go at the referee. I'm just saying I don't agree with him. I thought Liga did enough. I thought uh, it had much more dominant rounds. I thought Hunt was always struggling and settling in the early stages to keep himself into that. He certainly turned the fight around, he certainly had a big last round which tightened my scoring up, but not enough to turn it in his favour, but there you go.
For what it's worth, my scorecard had me get as a two-point winner, and Jim, you had it. Yeah, but I think I had the same in. Just, just let me check my card here. Meanwhile, we see that Miga landed. Yeah, but I had him punches. three points up. I actually had him clear up. Yeah, so there we are. But the referee seen a different fight, and Hunt has hold on in another controversy in the ring to his English title. Some people around me are saying they saw it level, so there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 astonishing rounds of championship boxing, referee Mark Green has scored the contest for Miga. 94 points for Hunt, 96 points, your winner, and still the lightweight champion of England from South End, the Essex boy, Danny Hunt. Who gets the decision by six rounds to four on Mark Green's card, and his card, the way things are in British boxing at the moment, is the only one that counts should there be three judges discuss. Well, Danny, you won the clash of the young prospects, yeah. but do you really think you deserve that? Definitely, yeah, I thought I got it for uh, the cleaner shots and the higher work rate, so yeah, it was a good fight, really close. I respect Lee, he's a brilliant fighter, you know, and I think you can go on and win, win something, definitely. It was a great fight, how tough was it in there? Very, very tough, he's a tough lad, you know, he's a good fighter, but um, I thought I deserved the win. Weren't a disgrace. No, no, weren't a disgrace. No. Danny, nice. Credit to both of you, but Lee, you're convinced you won that fight. Yeah, I thought I won it. Don't get me wrong. Danny Bot, brilliant. A lot better than I thought. Smart move. He switched angles, you know what I mean? But I thought I won the fight. I really did. And Jim Watt, and uh, most of the crowd thought that, you know what I mean? Apart from the ref. But there you go. That's what you get for fighting on the way, way turf. But, you know, that's the sport. Would you be calling for a rematch? Perhaps it was such a great fight anyway. Of course. I'll have a rematch every day of weeks, yeah. No problem. Danny's a lovely kid. Don't get me wrong. I've got no beef for Danny. Danny's a, a good kid. But, you know, I thought I won that, you know what I mean? Danny, it was a great fight. Is yeah. the obvious thing for you to box a rematch and decide the outcome again? I'm not sure. I'll sit down with Frank see what he wants to do. But um, once I've beaten opponents, I want to step on and move on from there. What's the I word with your manager, you, Frank Loney? Sorry, how did you had the, had the fight? Person, personally, I had you by a couple of rounds, but it's not my opinion that counts, unfortunately. Frank, is a rematch the obvious thing to happen? We'll see, we've got to sit down. I'd like to see Danny fight for the British title now. You know, Danny gave a performance, he come of age tonight. He had a bad round in the ninth round. But you can't just score with power shots, which Lee does. Danny was scoring regularly with his, with his work rate. Like, if it was controversial, then it, surely the obvious thing is a rematch. We'll see if we want a rematch. You know, my, my job is to look after Danny's career. If I think the rematch suits him, or if I get offered a title fight, British title, I'd rather take that. I'd rather step up with Danny Hunt. Final word with Danny Hunt, the champion. Respect to Lee this evening. Definitely, most definitely. You know, he's a good fighter. He's unbeaten in 18 fights. What can you say? He's got, he boxed really well. Yeah, he's a good fighter. Memorable, it most certainly was, Nicky. We have to hope that the argument over the scoring surely does not overshadow the display that both those young fighters put up here. Brilliant, brilliant contest. Both the very, very good fighters. But the other, it was one of those fights. I mean, Glenn and I scored independently of each other at ringside, and we both had it five rounds to each fighter. But it was one of those contests where. Uh, for instance, the fifth round, I made the point, I wrote on, on my scorecard, I gave it to Hunt, who threw far more punches, but the better, better quality of punches.